the next series of videos is going to talk about uh, the Miller and Modigliani model, the M&M model. And in corporate finance, it's a very well-known model. Uh, the goal of it is uh, to help a company determine uh, what the optimal capital structure is for that company. So uh, you you would basically be looking at a at the best mix between debt to equity that the company would be operating at. And this is uh, obviously important because each of these two things is going to have uh, some benefits and um, pros and cons associated with it. So if you're in a situation where you have too much debt or too little debt, you could potentially be uh, operating at a, at a level below your optimum. Okay, so um, there's a couple of terminology things I'll go over. And the, the first one is uh, the model talks about Proposition 1 and Proposition 2. Proposition 1 is simply uh, the value of a firm. And the goal of Proposition 1 is to maximize the value of a firm. And Proposition 2 is, uh, is the weighted average cost of capital of a firm. And the goal of the model is to determine what is uh, the position or what is a debt to equity ratio that would give you the lowest weighted average cost of capital? Um, so, so you want to minimize that. So that makes sense. Value, maximizing the value is common sense. Minimizing the cost of capital is because you want to get funds for the cheapest source. And the model will look at uh, three different cases. And these are essentially three scenarios with different sets of assumptions. Um, case one it assumes the most unrealistic set of assumptions, that there's no taxes or bankruptcy possible. So this is called the, the perfect world. Uh, case two says taxes exist, but bankruptcy is, uh, is still not possible. So it's a little bit more realistic, but it's not, the, um, it's not still reflective of the world. And case three is the most realistic one. It says that both taxes exist and uh, bankruptcy is possible. Uh, for a company as well. And the reason the model does it in uh, in three separate cases is because it, it just takes the bottom one and builds one on top of the other uh, in order to work its way into getting the three, uh, three different scenarios. Um, and in, in all three uh, of these uh, cases, you're going to have different conclusions for how to maximize the value of the firm and how to minimize the cost of capital. And that would make sense because you've got different assumptions, so you'd have a different conclusion. Uh, case one is probably the easiest uh, out of the three. Uh, I'll just go through that one right now. And, and basically, um, what it says is that uh, in a perfect world, a world that there's uh, no taxes and it is, uh, it's impossible for a company to go bankrupt, um, the conclusion that they, they reach is that uh, the capital structure really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your debt to equity ratio is. Uh, the value of the company will not change and um, the uh, weighted average cost of capital will not change. So it's uh, capital structure is uh, essentially irrelevant. And um, uh, th that, uh, that, that tends to uh, be a little confusing. You'd say, well, how, how can that make sense? Adding debt could increase the risk of the company, and, and that's true, but it only increases it if you can go bankrupt. If you can't, it will not. And similarly, uh, you could say adding debt is uh, it's a cheaper source of financing. It should lower the cost of capital, uh, but uh, there's no taxes, so that doesn't uh, occur. And essentially, the risk of the equity increasing will offset it. But uh, the simplest, uh, uh, I guess, uh, way of understanding it is that uh, uh, if you take this unrealistic set of assumptions, then uh, you're going to have the same value in all uh, in all cases. And pictorially, if you draw it out, I'll draw a chart. I'll draw a chart in all three of the cases for proposition one and two. And proposition one, the y-axis is value, and proposition two, the y-axis is a uh, weighted average cost of capital, and the horizontal axis is the amount of debt that you have. So from zero up to uh, up to as high as possible. And the, the chart basically will show that the value of a firm in this case is going to be a flat line. It doesn't matter what your debt to equity is, the value of the firm is the same. And similarly, the cost of capital is also the same. It doesn't change at all, uh, regardless of the debt to equity ratio. So um, the conclusion here, 
is basically that uh, you don't need to adjust weighted average cost of capital for any of these scenarios because it's not going to make any difference.